in some sense, there are the obvious things, right? So finance is a numbers game, right? So just having the ability to um, do data analysis, things like that, uh, is highly valued in the financial industry. Physicists often have that kind of training. I think that one of the things that people like physicists who are really trained to build models and to question models are able to bring to financial practices a, a deeper understanding of how and why the math that appears all over the place within the financial industry works. Every time there's a crash, of course, we hear a lot about the losers, but there are usually winners too, and there are people who, who don't lose quite as much. One can find many compelling examples of cases where the people who did okay did okay because they held their models at arm's length. It seems as if the people who have the most subtle understandings of the mathematical methods themselves seem to be the ones who, who don't fall prey to failures of models. I don't think we've learned any lessons, no. I, I think that we are very eager to just keep on introducing more risk, more uncertainty into our economics, into our politics, into our international relations. Part of it is a reaction to globalization. You know, in the last 75 years, there's been a great democratization across the world. I think that on the one hand, that has been great for an enormous number of people. But we're also seeing that some of the people who traditionally have been most politically powerful, who continue to be very politically powerful, have seen fewer benefits from it. And I think it's just not, not clear how that's going to, to play out.